Welcome to another BYU Family History Library training video. We have had requests to do a very basic video on getting started with Roots Magic. So here it is, Basic Roots Magic from the start. I am assuming that you have downloaded the Roots Magic program to your computer, either a PC or a Mac. There is a free version available for either type of computer. You can also purchase the program, which will include many additional features. When you launch the program, this is the view that you will see. And it says, Welcome to Roots Magic. What would you like to do? Create a new file, open an existing file, or three more choices. And we're going to create a new file. The first thing we do is give our file a name. And I always like to add a date so I know when I started the file. This will be located, saved to my computer in my documents folder, but you can save it anywhere you prefer. The next option to choose is the date format. There are many to choose from, but I'm going to go with the standard family search uh, date format with the month spelled out. And since I will be correlating this file with the family search family tree, I would like the family search ID to display after the name once I have made the connection. I will click family search family tree support. And then I'm asked, what do I want to do? Begin typing my information or import the information from another program. Since the purpose of this video is to show Roots Magic from the very start, we're going to begin typing my information. And I click OK. And this is the screen that comes up. It is a pedigree. And you're probably all familiar with this format. Another thing to note is this panel over on the left is blank. As I add names, the names will appear here, and this makes a very easy way to navigate through the program. I'll start with myself. And I'm going to put in my location of birth. and go ahead and click OK. This brings up the Edit Person panel and at this point I can add a fact from this very long list if I desire to do so. I'm not going to right now. I will go ahead and cancel that. But in looking at the information I note that I type my married name instead of maiden name, which would be the standard for a woman. So we'll go ahead and change that, save, and close. So here I am in the home position. I need to add my father, and I will add a new person. And you notice it has the last name already filled in and the sex. We'll put in a birth year. I'm doing this to save time and the location comes up automatically since I've already typed it in. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Again the Edit Person panel comes up. I'm not going to add anything else. There are many features. It shows the age of the person. It shows notes and sources and other information. We'll go ahead and close this. And then we'll add my mother. We're going to add a new person. And I remember to put in her maiden name. We put in her birth year. and the location, and the death here, 
and the location and we go ahead and click OK. I would like to add the marriage to my parents so I'll go ahead and select marriage and this brings up select a spouse John Westman is the correct one so I'll go ahead and click OK. The date the year is what I'm putting in and the place and that's all the information I'll put in. I will save this and close and so now we have me, father, mother, and we need to add some siblings. You'll notice that now I have three names over here on the left. I cl click from the pedigree to the family view we have John Beverly and we're going to add a child, add a new person and we'll go ahead and put in his birth year and location and his death year and location and we'll go ahead and click OK and close. So that's how easy it is to add siblings, but I want to show another way to add additional people. We go up here to the top menu panel and click add an individual. I'm going to add another brother just to show a different way of adding people and we'll go ahead and save this. Now we have Roger here. Here he shows up without any family because he's not linked to any families. The reason that you would do this is as you're doing research if you find people and you are not sure that they belong in a certain family you can go ahead and add them and then when you find where they belong you can easily attach them to a family. So now I click on myself. It shows me as a child and my parents. I'm going to click to add a child and I'm going to select an existing person. In this case, my brother. And I will select that. Now I see that they are out of birth order. This is very easy to fix with these arrows. I click on the arrow so I could move Rick down or Roger up. So I will move him up and click OK. And now they are in birth order. So ordering people and adding people is just that easy. We will go back to the pedigree view from the family view. You'll notice there are some other options here. Now my father is in the primary position with the red arrow. If I click on that, it will move me to that position. And I want to mention these icons. The light bulb are web hints. And so my father has 14 from Family Search, and this is a good way to add additional information from Find My Past, My Heritage, or Ancestry if I were logged into that program. I'm not going to show that, but just be aware that's available. Also, here's the Family Search Family Tree icon. When I click on this, it brings up Family Search, and I see that this information matches. I click, I match with Family Search, and I close that um, window. And now you see that the Family Search tree has a blue highlight. It also has my father's Family Search ID number added to his name. So this makes a very easy reference. There's one other logo. I'd like to, one other caution sign here. I click on this for my mother, and it says Beverly was 104 years old when she died. That is not correct. And so this has caught a mistake that I made. 
I go ahead and fix the death here and close and now the um, web hints comes up. I'm not going to add anything now but so that shows the a very powerful feature of um, typos or errors that you may make and so this is a nice thing to have. So here's a basic demonstration of getting started with Roots Magic. Thanks for watching.